Hello, this is Haka Devin, and today we are going to be reading a story called Learning. And we'll see if we will be reading the next story afterward, after we're done with this first one. If you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get right into this. Oh yeah, wish me a happy birthday in the comments, because that's what today is. I am officially 23 now. Learning. For more urchins, the place to be was Caliphate, Heart of Caliph. Fables of the stupid rich buying relics for 10 times what they were worth, and of poor men who went from starving to retiring in the space of a day, abounded in the world of trade. So two men rode east across the desert. One on horseback, one on camel, hoping to find themselves dressed in colored silks on the other side. Three days were left to travel, with one village, Medea, between them and the city, when they found two dead men lying face down in the dirt. Both packs appeared to have been rifled through, and the sand around them was stained black with dried blood. A follower of York got lucky here, one man shouted to the other with a thick accent. No, there's plenty left to steal. The man who killed them took their water, maybe their horses too, but look in this pack. Where the first man carried was the ungaunt looking, sharp featured, and bony, the second was broad and muscular. His name was Goreth. They emptied the pack on the ground and found it was filled with relics. Carrick lit up, seeing value where Goreth saw wonder. But then was a plain of was a plain set of clothes. Carrick added it to his own gear, a crude metal copy cu mug with uh, letters of the old language. I see the end of trees, bell and goss. The second name was rested over a polished black pipe. A bag of tobacco was tucked inside the copy mug. The new the man realized its purpose, so this was discarded. And a green book. Hmm. Hmm, what a what a caliphate man give for a relic of the old world. Carrick's eyes had widened with... I need to actually do the voices. Hmm, what would a caliphate man give for a relic of the old world? Carrick's eyes had widened with glee and anticipation. <clears throat> Food, water, his wealth and daughter? Garth finished the a joke. Both laughed and hugged each other for their find. Carrick examined the pipe while Gorth opened the book. He looked at the page and examined the only line on it. He flipped to the back and the front, finding nothing in the other pages. He threw out his brow and went back to the page with the words, remembering that he hadn't what he hadn't used since he was a small boy. He sounded out. What does that mean, Gorth? Carrick did not know how to read as it was. Gorth frowned and shook his head. I don't know, but we must ride, friend. We can reach the Medea village before sundown. The two strapped the fine Uda rides and started off at a brisk pace. They had no food left, and Karak had hoped, hoped to find something new to eat before they slept. They rode with him in, in front by three lengths, contemplating his dinner. He looked back, he might have asked Gorik what was on his mind. To somebody who didn't know him, he would have looked upset, but large man rarely looked anything else, and in truth, he was looking on thoughtfully. The book was no tome, not heavy by any means. He could have flipped to any page, and yet he flipped to the only one with words on it. It was a funny little coincidence. Before Gorth could think on the matter any longer, he fell from his horse and died. Carrick, while briefly, while Rite briefly left himself a moment later, remembered that he was going to carry Gorth. Kill Gorith anyway to avoid splitting profits. He had planned on doing it in two nights while they slept between Inmedea and Elephant. This was just as well for him, as now his only hindrance was tying Gorith's horse to his own camel. He did not realize. How could he? That had Gorath lived for another day and night, he would have become richer than either of them could have hoped. 
but he rode on to Medea. The character did not sell his heirs in the village. It was poor and nobody had much need for relics. And even if somebody decided to buy from him, a collegiate man would pay twice what he could get in it here. But he needed food, or rather he wanted food. He figured that buying something to eat in Medea was more prudent than in Caliphate if one had a choice. At least until he made it his fortune. So he would sell one relic from the pack he and Garth had found. He would accept nothing less than what he, he could use to buy one of the a chicken he had seen on his way into the heart of the village. Then he would eat, sleep, ride, and get rich. So he would sell. Oh, sick on the blanket he had laid out. He caught anyone who would listen. Relics! Relics! Have you not seen the utensils of the king yet, my friends? But look and peruse the very stuff of legends! As he was showing one elder the black pipe, what else could be for my friend? Orphan infants to suckle off of! Put the milk of a goat of your choosing in this white I then I let the nurse at the tip! A young girl, eight years old at most, looked over the things with wonder. The other walked away, shaking his head. Garrick scowled and turned to the girl. And just what do you need, little miss? His voice seethed with sarcasm and acid, making the little girl cringe backwards, seeming to shrink. My mama told me to fetch a chicken for us to eat tonight. She gave me this. The little one held up a coin. Its edges were flat and rough and uneven. Okay, right in. Thinking about the fool's girl old he had lying in before him, and thank the orc for the fool before him. Well, little miss, surely your mother wouldn't mind if you browse for or but a moment. His own has changed from scaly and patronizing, becoming animated and colorful. Look at the wonders before you and tell me what catches your pretty E.I. She picked up the book. Odd child. Ah, the wizard's home. Ah, the wizard's home. The little miss has a good eye. She opened the book and gasped. My grandmother showed me those letters. No. Yes, she showed owed them to me before she died. I know the sounds they make. What well, you so skill? Then it's fate, little miss. No doubt your grandmother wanted you to take this book. She sent it here. Really? Of course. Bring it to your family. Shut them what you found. This is worth much more than a tired old chicken, sweetling. This is magic. The girl gasped. But only half she trod off, looking at the coin. Her side swell. Carrot got on one knee so he could look up to her. No, little miss, I can't interfere with fate. Here, take the book. I will take the coin. Even though the is its home is worth its weight in silver. Stupid girl. Best of luck, uh, best of luck. Run home, run, for surely your family will shower you with praise for the magic you have brought to, into their lives. The little girl started running frantically with a huge grin before she doubled back to an origin. Well, she threw her hands around his waist. It's tight in a tight embrace before she started running again, clutching the book to her chest. Stupid. Kirk rolled up the blanket and tied it to his horse. He flipped the coin, cut, and walked in the direction of the chicken coop. Stupid girl! Her mother shrieked. Her voice boomed in the little hut. Stupid, stupid, stupid! She hit the girl across the face. We can't eat a book! But the book is magic? She slapped her again. There is no oh magic! I for damn stupid useless girl! She grabbed up the book and hurled it like a disc out the doorway. Sleep outside! See if the book keeps you alive! The girl slipped through the doorway, crying. She found the book and stared at it, but she found it 
and as hard as she could with her tiny fist. Some of the others in the villager looked out at her from their huts. She kept crying while she went and ba around back. A few minutes and it went by before she calmed down enough to open the book again. Well, I have the same so out, and she sounded out the letters her grandmother had taught her nearly a year ago. But only said the same thing and felt decidedly unmagical. With that, a new wave of emotion overcame her and she cried herself to sleep. And awoke in the most beautiful place she had ever seen. It was a wonderland with a vivid landscape of trees and valleys and mountains in the distance. Birds colored like rainbows flew right over her head. And she watched as amazing animals sprint across the valley below. She looked up and saw more stars than ever before, despite it still seeming like daytime. The two sons in the distance. Excuse me, little miss. She spun around and gasped at the man before her. He was tall, almost twice as tall as she was, as, and much older. His beard was long but tidy, down to his chest and was bright white. His hair was the same color as were his eyebrows, which were bushy and raised as he looked at her. The voice he used was soft and deep, but friendly, and he was very calm when he spoke. His face was friendly too, with many wrinkles and creases on the side as of his upturned lips. But most amazing was his cloak. It was a shimmering green and flooded with waves of shades from <sighs> excuse me from a deep, deep emerald, deep emerald that almost looked like obsidian to a leaf, like leafy olive, and everything in between. The girl was stupefied. Hello there. Hello there. Are are you the wizard? She was standing and. Stammering, even though she seemed friend, even though he seemed friendly, she wasn't sure what to make of him. But he smiled, and she felt better straight away. I suppose I am. May I ask who you are, young one? Alea. What a pretty name, Alea. So, Alea, do you know where you are? The girl gazed about her shyly. She had never seen the animals before, and never seen in, in a sight so beautiful. Am I in heaven? <laughs> the old man's laugh was full and deep. It wasn't mean at all. It was young. No, my dear, you aren't in heaven. You're far too young to see the afterlife. That's for old men like me. You're in the book you found, Alea. The book? The book. I call myself the bookkeeper. But you may call me whatever you like. And in, in here, I suppose a wizard is about right. The book had words in it. Can you read, Alea? My grandmother showed me letters, but I only know some of the sounds they make. I can't read very good. Would you be so kind as to walk with me, Alea? I haven't had company in a very long time, and would love to speak with a bright youth like yourself. So I walked through the marvelous forest and alleys, and a bookkeeper answered all of Alea's questions. She had found a magic book, and was elated at the thought. It was magic! Indeed, and so you see, Alea, when people visited me before, it was a very different time. And who had all they needed and knew all they, they could hope to know. The old world? Yes, but I've went a long time without any visitors, and am so happy that you've come here. I do what, ha what happened to the other man. He hasn't shown up yet. Oh well, he'll be along soon enough. What I want to ask you, Alea, is if you'll come back again. Oh yes, bookkeeper, this place is wonderful. He smiled out oh, an elated smile. But you have to promise me something, Alea. His expression turned somber. 
I made a mistake in the old world, one that I will never let happen again. You have to promise me that you'll keep being happy in your world. You may visit as often as you like, and indeed I hope you do, but you have to remember your promise and live in your world as much as you do mine. Alea nodded with energy. Good, the bookkeeper smiled again. Bookkeeper? Yes, little one. What did the word say? I don't know, the sounds very good. It said, a hero is born. How much you know about the letters your grandmother showed you? Not very much, bookkeeper. She only knew a little bit too. The smile disappeared and the wizard looked puzzled. I think we'll start there, Alea. Will you let me teach you how to read? Okay, that was cute. That was the Valiver story learning. At first, it seems like they stumbled across the Book of Diseases, but they actually stumbled across the book that grants amazing dreams to those who read it. And the, the instant that the old man is referencing is actually in the log for this book. I don't remember if I read about it, but basically a researcher was so obsessed with the book that they only went in the book. And then as soon as they woke up, they committed self-termination. And the bookkeeper did not want them to do that and was very distraught that they would do that. So now the bookkeeper has made, has pretty much said that he will never let this happen again. Oh yeah, by the way, today is my birthday. Please wish me a happy birthday in the comments. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you tomorrow doing whatever I do. Until then, goodbye!